The world is changing. We are being faced with problems unlike anything we've ever seen before. We cannot point to any other time in history and say, no, this has happened before. No, what we are experiencing today is a completely new world with technology unlike anything we've ever seen before. We are growing up in a society different than our ancestors had to deal with. And we're struggling to cope with it. We have no idea how to deal with what we have created. We have no idea how to understand the society that we have built for ourselves. Now, luckily, there is a new generation emerging. And today I'm going to talk about 10 signs that you are part of this new generation. I'm going to talk to you about what this generation needs to do in order to change the world and what skills you're going to need to develop in order to cope with this new reality. So listen up and subscribe to understand more about yourself and about the world. The 10 signs that you are part of a new generation. Sign number one. You are no longer just content with being good at work or having a talent or having success. It's no longer enough for you to have a well-paying job or to have a successful lifestyle in the eyes of society. No, nowadays we need something more and you need in particular something more. You need self-actualization. You need to do something that is in line with your purpose and sense of identity. No longer is it enough to just work a 9 to 5 job, to just earn a salary. No, it has to feel like what you do is meaningful. And today we live in a world where a lot of the things we do don't feel meaningful. We live in a world where things don't really feel connected to you. Lots of people grow up and live doing something they don't like or that's something that isn't fulfilling. So. You are part of this new generation if you've decided that you're going to do and follow your purpose and that you're going to find a way to live your purpose and to make money and to be successful while doing something that you love. Sign number two that you are part of a new generation. You're not content with just fitting in anymore. You don't just want to have the approval of your parents or of your community or your friends. It's not enough for you to that other people like you or agree with you. You have to feel that you like yourself. You have to feel like you are being the kind of person that you need to be for yourself. That means more than ever that you want to bring unique value to your community. You want to contribute to society and to your community by doing something that you feel that you are meant to do. So no longer can you just follow the rules and do what everyone else is doing and live up to your expectations. Nowadays, there is a feeling that you need to do more than that. You need to do something that you want to do, that you think can be helpful for other people, no matter if other people like it or not. Sign number three that you are part of this new generation. You are no longer going to wait for the approval of other people. Other people don't need to verify what you want to do. Other people don't need to give you permission for you to do what you want to do. And even if they didn't, you were going to do it anyways. Yeah, you have found the resolve and the strength to break out of the crowd and to live according to your own moral compass and according to your own metric of purpose. And you're going to do it even if other people disagree with you or even if there is some fallout or some conflict because of this. Sign number four that you are part of a new generation. You don't want to just succeed by yourself. You want other people to succeed with you. You want to create a success that is able to be shared with other people. You want what you do to bring some kind of value to your community and your society. It's no longer enough that something you do will give you and will grant you your own power, your own success. Nowadays, there's a feeling like what you do has to have an impact, has to help other people, has to do something to combat global problems like climate change. There's a feeling like what you do has to be sustainable. And that is something that is very important to this new generation. 
sign number five that you are different. You are not going to be held back by the prevalent ideas of your society. Honestly, nothing that this society believes in or holds or takes for granted is sacred for you. Nothing about how we live or the ideologies or the culture, tradition or religious ideas that exist around you are sacred. Anything can be changed or compromised or altered or questioned. That means you are able to think about things from new perspectives. You're able to see things in new light. You're able to look at things in ways that have never been done before. And that's what's unique about you. Your ability to question and to live outside of existing beliefs and existing traditions and social culture. Sign number six that you are part of this new generation. You know how to use your community to succeed. Yeah, while in the past people could pursue individual success, a lot of the time at the expense of other people, competing for success, competing for approval, competing for being the best. Nowadays, that's not your approach. That's not how you are going to do it. You are going to succeed by building something together with other people. Yeah. You're going to use your community to succeed. You're going to borrow from the ideas and the thoughts and perspectives of other people. And you're going to collaborate with other people in order to achieve your personal goals. You know that while you have a strength and a power that is your own, and while you are a completely capable person, you are more capable and you can achieve more together with other people. Sign number seven that you are part of this new generation. Everything you do empowers the people around you. What you do inspires confidence. When you step out of the group and when you do your thing, you inspire other people to do the same thing. Yeah, You're a bit of a dangerous person to be around because through this, you change people's perspectives. You get people thinking and you get people wanting more, dreaming, hoping and burning the way you do. You can challenge people. You can challenge other people in ways that instill confidence. Yeah, it's fine for you to have arguments with other people. It's fine for you to challenge others. It's fine for you to put other people on the spot and to question them. But you know how to question them in a way that makes them rise to the challenge. You know how to push buttons in ways that get people to really wake up, to really burn and to really care. You get people to feel something. You get people to feel like they can rise to the challenge. If you challenge them, you also show them how they can rise to the challenge. You know how to challenge other people and when and on what to challenge them. You're not going to search for conflict in order to win or to beat down other people. You're going to accept that conflict is sometimes necessary in order to get people to wake up and in order to get people to feel. And you do it in a way that makes people feel something positive, something important, something that is important to them. Sign number nine that you are part of a new generation. You know how to disagree with other people. Yeah, a problem in today's world is that people don't know how to disagree with each other. A lot of the time what ends up happening is we fall into tribalism. We fall into small clique groups. We avoid conflict. We avoid disagreement. We create a consensus culture where everyone tries to conform and think the same way, where people are afraid to think for themselves. But you, you don't like that anymore. You don't want to be that kind of a person anymore. You want to be able to disagree and you want to be able to go your own way when it is necessary. And you know how to disagree with other people without contributing to clannishness or to tribal conflicts or to narrow-minded, short-sighted uh, virtue signaling so when you take a stand on things when you discuss your opinions you do it in a way 
that allows other people to agree with you. You allow and invite other people to think the way you do, and you allow them to think differently. You show people why you think the way you do, and you show that you are interested in learning about why they think the way they do. You are not afraid to hear other people's thoughts. You don't feel like you need to avoid certain groups because you think they're uh, too outlandish. No, you're open-minded to everyone. You enjoy hearing other people's perspectives. And you can even find it amusing that other people think differently. Sign number 10. You are not afraid of heated emotions. Yeah, sometimes people want to live in a world without emotion. They want to avoid anxiety. They want to avoid fear. They want to avoid anger. They want to avoid shame. So they live in the simple ways that can keep them from experiencing these things. But a life without emotion is a life without challenge. It's a life without accomplishment. It's a life without growth. You're not afraid of emotions. People can get angry with you. People can get sad. You can get sad. You can struggle. You can feel confused. You can feel lost. But you know that these are just emotions. You know that these things, emotions, they're just information. They're just there to guide you. All they're doing is telling you about how you feel. All they do is remind you that you care, that you matter, that things are important, that things have value. That means a life with emotion is a life of meaning and a life without emotion is a life without meaning. That means a conflict where people get angry is a conflict that has meaning, a conflict that has value. And that means you are connecting with each other. So that means you are having something meaningful together with each other. You are bonding with each other. If you can step into and feel emotions and can allow yourself to have emotions and can allow other people to have emotions, you're going to have it a lot easier to connect with other people and to influence other people because everyone has and needs to feel their emotions. What is this new generation called? Don Beck, the author of Spiral Dynamics, called this type of people yellow or flex flow types. And that word flex flow, that means really just to know when to move with the flow and when to break against the waves. Yeah, what we have to learn today, perhaps the most important skill we can learn today is when to agree and when to fall in line with the crowd and when to go with the flow and when to choose the easy path and when to fight and what to fight on and how to fight the right way. Yeah, you don't want to bang your head against the same wall over and over. You want to find the cracks and that's where you want to bang. That's where you want to knock. That's what you want to do. Yeah, you don't want to be in conflict every day. You don't want everything you do to be a struggle. No, you want to channel your flow. You want to move with the waves. You want to use the power of the community to push you forward, to propel you where you need to be. But if it ever diverges from what you want, you want to know how to take a step outside. You want to know and you want to learn to be both a sheep and a wolf. Yeah, somebody that can be compassionate, caring and loving, but also somebody that can be angry, can be <laughs> um, aggressive, can be proactive and can go against society and rebel. What we are learning today is how to cope in a world that is craving consensus, a world past liberalism, a world that has been slavishly uh, serving the idea of material wealth accumulation. Yeah, people are crazy about earning money. People are crazy about contributing to a higher GDP. Yeah, everyone is chasing numbers. Everyone is chasing statistics, statistics that uh, are just truly numbers, statistics that have no real value. Yeah, we live in a world where some people are slavishly bound to these liberal dogs, while other people are slavishly bound to their community. Yeah, some people are stuck in their community, stuck in a social uh, system uh, with rules and norms that are have become incredibly constrictive. Yeah, our education system is incredibly linear, teaching us according to 18th century standards. Yeah, 
uh, workplace cultures are very narrow, challenging and combating diversity, and in doing so, challenging and combating individuality. Yeah, being too bound, too limited by your community is exhausting. It's exhausting to constantly fear backlash. It's exhausting to fear ever becoming the victim of the herd mentality, to be the victim of group bullying, to feel or fear that everyone is going to turn against you. It's difficult to realize that you have a tribe that could turn against you, to have people around you that could uh, try to corner you, could try to control you, could try to limit you. And it's scary to uh, think about the classic liberal uh, society where everything was about money and where everything was just about success. No, we need to create something new. We need to create something that allows for and honors individuality while celebrating community. Yeah, we need to be able to connect together as individuals. We need to be able to help each other despite our differences. We need to be able to have differences and we need to be able to still, despite that, be able to work together on uh, issues we agree on. Yeah, we need to be able to use our communities, but we also need to be able to challenge our communities. And sometimes the best way to help our community is by asking questions that make the community a little bit uncomfortable. So are you one of the flex flow types? Are you one of these yellow types? Are you one of these people? Did you relate to these 10 signs? And how do you feel about our present day society? And if you're stuck, and if you feel like, I don't know how to deal with these things, and if you feel like, I don't know if I have the courage to stand out, I don't know if I have the power to uh, break free from the tribe, I don't know if I have the courage to chase my passion and purpose, well, leave a like and uh, leave a comment, and maybe I'm going to talk about that in a future video.